Molajak. Yeah. Uh, we've, yeah, we, we've got our we've got our spot. We've got our barber that we go to um, every time we go back. So, yeah, Barber Marrakesh on uh, yeah on Corso Buenos Aires. That's our that's our spot in Milan. <laughs> So I, luckily, I have nothing to do with that decision because that would be too difficult for me to make. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming the management just goes, all right, who's paying us the most? All right, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I know in the past with my other band, it's always been a bidding war because um, that's, that's when people come out of the woodwork that you never talk to start saying, hey, our brewery would love to have a Celtic punk band play for Patty's Day. So, yeah. <laughs> Boston and New England in general had always had such a strong punk and hardcore in ska scene. Rest in peace to the Mighty Mighty Boston's they broke up yesterday, which is very upsetting to this city. Um, so I, I was very much involved in, like, so many different music scenes growing up. And then when I started listening to the Pogues when I was, you know, also a teenager, I was like, wait, this band is taking the music that I heard from my grandmother, mixing it with the music I listened to, and I just fell in love with Celtic punk um, via the Pogues. And then got into more folk music from that, started listening to the Waterboys, and um, yeah, it, it kind of led to a lot of different, uh, I guess, areas of music um, outside of like just the punk genre that I listened to as a teenager, you know? As a kid, that was probably the only Irish song that I knew by heart. It was written on my grandmother's refrigerator because, you know, she had she had come from Cork in, in the 1920s. Um, her family had, uh, they were very much involved in the Troubles. And uh, yeah, so Ireland was always dear to our heart. And then ha basically having had the family ripped out of Ireland, she always felt that she was deprived of an Irish upbringing. And she always missed it and while still appreciating her life here in the U.S. Um, and the safety that it provided them. Um, so that's why we were taught to love Ireland. Mulacha! Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually where I wrote it. Um, not many people know that, that that's an old, that was an old nickname for, mm. for Belfast. And um, yeah, I was staying with a friend there. And she had, she was going through some, she was going through some pretty rough, rough waters. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, the song it just kind of came into my head while I was walking around, you know, the streets of Belfast. Should know. Um, oof. I would say the town I loved so well. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite ones. That one, Red is the Rose, is a beautiful Irish song. Um, I like Botany Bay. I think I think that's just a good floor stomping pub song about the Irish getting shipped off to Australia. Also searching for gold. Um, yeah, those those three mix in beauty with sing song. So I don't. Yeah, that, that's a tough question because there's a lot, there's a lot in there. <laughs> Yeah, lobster weather. That's that's my phrase. When it's uh, you know, maybe maybe like four or five degrees uh, Celsius. You know, it's it's not not freezing, but it's cool. And a lobster would just go like, oh yeah, this is comfortable. That's the weather I like. But of course, right now we have snow on the ground, and it's and we're getting a blizzard tonight. We're getting like about I don't know th three quarters of a meter. Yeah, yeah. my dad, um, he always traveled for work. So when he would come home, he would bring home like a hat with a kangaroo on it if he was in Australia or, you know, just, just you know, little, uh, call them trinkets, little things from these countries that he'd go to. So in our house, we would have this little shelf of 
you know, souvenirs from all these countries. So I always grew up with a world image of like, no, the world is outside of immediately where we live. And then when I was 10, he had to be in Spain for work. So he brought the family and we did a trip to Madrid. Um, and then I think we went down to Malaga. Um, so yeah, it, it, when I was 10, I was really exposed to like, oh, okay, this is the rest of the world does exist. And now I've seen it. And I think it did shape me, you know, as a child to see, because as Americans, we're so isolated from so much, you know, so much goes on here that it's to bring a family of children to Europe is that must be such a pain. Kids are awful. <laughs> as good as kids are, <laughs> you know, especially flying pre 9-11. And I don't know, it must have been a mess. Kids running around the plane like we must not have been easy. Mulatcha! Who is also Jewish? Yeah, my last name. My last name is uh, Ukrainian Jewish. I just I just try to read as many different news sources as I can. As as with any as with any thing going on, I try to read everything to kind of paint a picture. It's like it's tough to one source and get an idea of what's happening. Oddly enough, I studied psychology and neuroscience. Um, and then I, after working in a lab, I said, this isn't what I want to do. And through a long series of crazy events, I actually worked in that building over there <laughs> a little bit and then got a job in this building that I'm in now. Um, as a as a video editor editing TV commercials a few years later after I decided that I wanted to go into film. Um, and then I took a freelance route in my career for a while. And yeah, I, I've shot documentaries in Tasmania, Greece, Germany, uh, Mexico, and then a few places in the States. Um, so yeah, it's been a really weird and wild ride. You picked the topics yourself, or for the I was working with a YouTube channel that basically I would have to pitch what I wanted each special or documentary to be on. Once it was approved, um, I was given a budget, a very tight budget, and I would just go out in the world and produce them myself. And then, unfortunately, COVID happened, put an end to that at the same exact time the Rumjacks asked me to be in the band. Um, so two of the documentaries that I shot never got edited and then some of the edited finished ones never got released, which was, oh, so it was, yeah, it was tough, but. <laughs> we play on the moon? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, funny story, my, I don't know how true this is, so take this with a grain of salt. My great, uh, my grandfather, he worked for the American Flag Company, whatever the official name of that is. And when they went to the moon in 69, supposedly he, that pole, that flagpole has a lot of inscriptions written on it. Supposedly he wrote Rivkeys on it with a lot of, there's a lot of other last names and other things on there. Supposedly my last name's on the moon. I don't know. So <laughs> if, we, if we end up playing the moon base, yeah, I will uh, try to get there to find out. Moolacha. This is Mike from the Rumjacks. You're watching Moolah Chuck, the only TV you need. Moolah Chuck!